It's the last of our six state championship games at the boys state championships. Bergen versus Ravenna. Ravenna going for the repeat in class C2. John Bishop alongside Kevin Suits. And Kevin, we have another team in Ravenna going for a repeat, but we have a team in Bergen coming out of, again, one of those tough, small-town conferences, the Centennial Conference, which qualified a number of teams for state. Yeah, Archbishop Bergen has put together a really fine season, a pretty balanced team from top to bottom. They have a lot of scoring options. So this should be a pretty fun contest, especially you look across the way. Ravenna, they've been here before. They have some big game experience and a fantastic coach. So should be pretty interesting to see how this one unfolds. Ravenna has been in this game four out of the last six years. So that championship experience will help. But Bergen won Class D1 two years ago, made third place last year. So they're no amateurs at this as well. Should be a good way to cap off the night. We'll be Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Farmers rely on it. Businesses depend on it. Families trust it. It is public power. And at NPPD, we know Nebraskans don't take it for granted. That's why every dollar is reinvested into the system. The power plants, transmission lines, and utility employees that deliver safe and reliable electricity to you. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Want to know more about the Nebraska Budget Crunch? Follow NET News online at netnebraska.org slash unicameral to find out how our state is dealing with its budget problems and the impact it has on you. Be more connected and log on to netnebraska.org slash unicameral. The Class C2 Championship, last year it was the first game that let us off, and Ravenna won it. This year, it's the last game on the schedule. Can Ravenna repeat? Archbishop Bergen, the opponent, two teams with six combined losses, battle-tested both of these schools. In fact, many experts thought that Bergen wasn't the team that was going to be here. It was going to be Axtell, who was the number one seed. But Bergen upset Axtell. They've spoiled the party. And now they're going to try to go out and claim their fourth state championship in school history. Let's meet the Blue Jays and the Knights for one final time. We send it across the way to our public address announcer, Doc Weiniger. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, its member schools, and U.S. Bank, Welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the Class C2 State Championship game. Tonight's game features the Ravenna High School Blue Jays versus the Knights of Archbishop Bergen High School. And now, let's meet the players and coaches competing in tonight's game. First, the non-starters for the visiting team, the Ravenna Blue Jays. Number 12, Spencer Kromosta. Number 22, Josh Crowell. Number 25, Tyson Anderson. Number 32, Mark Kromosta. Number 42, Ethan Zorb. Number 43, Lucas Wilkie. And number 44, Sean Payne. And now, the non-starters for the home team, the Archbishop Bergen Knights. Number 10, Matt Slicester. Number 21, Tanner Worth. Number 24, Thomas Wendt. Number 33, Curtis Kammerer. 
number 42, Evan Stober. Number 44, Jackson Marr. And number 55, Grant Meyergaard. And now, the starting lineup for the Ravenna Blue Jays. A 6-2 senior number 20, John Klosterman. A 5-8 sophomore number 21, Trevor Saborn. A 6-3 sophomore number 30, Connor Baranek. A 6-3 senior number 31, Riley Baranek. And a six-foot senior, number 41, Brett Douglas. Head coach for the Blue Jays is Paul Baranek, assisted by Tony Shermer, Randy Basnett, and Brian Duncan. And now, the starting lineup for the Archbishop Bergen Knights. A 5'8", junior, number three, Josh Boggs. A 5'11", senior, number 13, Patrick Rasmussen. A 6'3", junior, number 25, John Spellerberg. A 6'1", senior, number 34, Nick Jensen. And a 6'5", senior, number 45, Derek White. Head coach for the Knights is Chris Paulson, assisted by Chris Rainforth, Matt Slicer, and Tyler Swanson. Tonight's game officials are Steve Farley, Jeff Passold, and Ryan Specht. And now, gentlemen, let's play basketball! Ravenna and Archbishop Bergen for the Class C2 State Championship. As we mentioned, Bergen hails from Fremont, Ravenna from Central Nebraska. Bergen got here thanks to the upset of Axtell yesterday, got out to a 29 to nine lead and held off Axtell as Axtell never could really get closer than seven points the rest of the way. Ravenna kinda had a hot cold day. They were hot as a fire shooting the first day against Sutton, but yesterday kinda struggled through their game against Johnson County, but prevailed to get here and a chance to repeat. So here we have it. Two teams that are accustomed to playing deep into the postseason. Good matchups on both sides of the game. I, I'm really anxious to watch the Veronic boys, as always, for Ravenna. And then on the other side, Archbishop Bergen, good balance scoring. Nick Jensen and Derek White pretty much run the show. It's been two years since Bergen played in the championship, but only a couple of players had any experience in that game. Derek White was one. You might recall that was a game against St. Francis where Wes Eichmeyer went off for 43 points. Yeah, that was the day of Wes Eichmeyer, the tournament of Wes Eichmeyer. But it's a different team. And last year they finished in third place, and they'll start with a basketball. Bergen and the home whites. This is Boggs. Outside three, that's going to be off the mark and out of bounds by John Spellerberg. Leading scorers for the Knights are Derek White, the 6'5". Senior, the post, and Nick Jensen averages 12 points a game. He's the 6'1 senior forward. For Ravenna, three players average in double figures. Trevor Saborn leads the way at 14-4. Connor Baronic at 14-2. John Klosterman at 10.5 points per game. Well, look around for Connor Baronic. Remember last year, those two, three bombs that he <laughs> Drop down against Freeman. Yeah, I went back and watched the tape of that actually, and still some of those three um, threes amaze me. Ravenna for two and a hard, hard foul. Down to the deck off the foul by Brett Douglas. Goes Derek White. Yeah, White's lucky he didn't knock his head on the floor. That was a very hard fall. You see Baronic right there, just making sure he's okay. There's no ir ill intent. Good on that foul. Good sportsmanship there, too, by Baronic. You would expect nothing less from the son of a coach. First free throw, though, is missed. Now, this is the first time these teams have played here in the Devaney Center in this tournament. Not that it should really matter. But just in case. Also, been a long time off. 
Waited through all of these championship games to get here and play in the nightcap. Two to one, Ravenna. Into the front court comes Saborn. Look down low, Saborn turns, posts up and scores. Yes, yeah, Saborn got right there in the paint, one on one, made a nice little fake to one side, went the other way and gets the two. Active hands by Ravenna on the defensive end, but cleaning the glass is Bergen, and now they want to run with the basketball. Rasmussen, stop though. Ravenna very athletic. They get back quickly on defense. It's hard to beat them down the floor. Three, well short by Rasmussen. Rasmussen with a big time three in the first round win over Hardington, Cedar Catholic. Douglas, flat foots it, short. He's got that range, Rasmussen does. Mainly known for his play down low, but he can pop out and shoot the three. John Klosterman with the push. And that's the second team foul against the Blue Jays. 22 and three, or 24 and three, I beg your pardon, are Ravenna. Their only losses this year came to Axtell in the district finals, who were it was the number one seed coming into the tournament. Adam Central out of Class B and Grand Island Central Catholic. He got blown out 63 to 29 by Central Catholic, but that was in the second game of the year. Since then, almost spotless record. Yeah, that could make you, second game of the year, that could make you really question your ability right out of the gates to just get blasted. But, says a lot about that team to be able to go back to the drawing board, regroup, and say, you know what? It shows us where we need to get to. Jumper is short by Nick Jensen. And Bergen still without a field goal. Spellerberg last touched it off his leg. As you take a look at head coach Chris Paulson. State champions in class D1 two years ago, as we mentioned earlier. Finished in third place last year. With a practically entirely new team. Graduated a lot of seniors off those 08 champions, including Eichmeier. Look at that cutter underneath. Good pass by Cyborg. Veronic with the finish, 6-1 Ravenna. Pretty textbook basketball right there. Rasmussen wants three, doesn't get it. And we got a foul on the loose ball after the miss. And that one's gonna be whistled on Sean Payne, 6-4 senior center for the Blue Jays. You're gonna see a lot of substitutions. Ravenna's got a pretty deep bench as has been kind of a trademark of theirs over their run of success the last six years or so. They play a lot of guys. Already played nine guys in this game. See the straight up man-to-man -man defense by Ravenna. And you'll see Bergen counter with a nice motion offense. A lot of screens, they look to get the ball inside. To Derek White, who has the first Bergen field goal, 6-3 Ravenna. Into the front court, Tyson Anderson. Douglas will hand it off to Klosterman. John Klosterman will swing his way around and use the glass. Offensive board, no. And Bergen finally cleans it up. Klosterman tried to stick with it and try to get the shot to fall on the putback, but it wouldn't go down. Instead, we're headed the other way. Spellerberg, and now outside to Boggs. They look underneath, layup, yes. Boggs, fancy entry pass. Didn't really have the angle, so had a little backspin on it to get it inside. Thomas went with the two, and a blocking foul. Here the first one of the game against the Knights. Against Joshua Boggs, 5'8", junior guard, averages four points a game. Four minutes left to play here in the opening period. And it's Ravenna leading Bergen 6-5 in the C2 title game. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. Bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. 
programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. This is NET Television. More channels and more choices. John Bishop, Kevin Suits back here along with our entire 1011 and NET sports production crew. Great work by the men and women behind the scenes. We really appreciate it for the last two weekends. And for the NET folks, they've been working hard on all of the state championships. It's a grueling month. Yeah, it is. It Starting really is. with wrestling and transitioning into swimming, and then you had the girls' championships last week, now the boys' championships. Red Douglas trapped in the corner, got it away. Fade away by Cyborg, no, and the over the back. That's already the fifth team foul against Ravenna. And we mentioned they play deep and they're gonna have to. Yeah, Saborn with an innocent foul, just trying to go follow his shot, happened to reach over the back. That's why the whistle blew. Nicholas Jensen to bring it up for the Knights. Boggs will work to his left. Ravenna's defense extends quite a ways beyond the arc. Jensen takes it in. But then again, by doing so, it opens up some lanes and creates a little more space down low. That's where Bergen's been able to make some hay in the early going. It was 6-1. to one. It's now a 6-0 run, and Bergen has their first lead of the game. Foul on the Knights, and they're going to get Curtis Kammerer, 5'11", senior guard. John Payne, you just saw him a moment ago checking in, getting a little separation there was Klosterman, but he missed the layup. Moronic there with the offensive rebound and the putback, and Ravenna takes an 8-7 lead, and we got a touch foul into the front court, and that'll be the second one on Saborn. Moronic didn't have to go far for that putback. He was the one who triggered the inbound pass, so he was right there under the hoop, able to get the board and the score for Ravenna as they lead by one. 2.53 left here in the opening period. High lob looking for the quick score. They were lucky to keep possession of the ball there. It was Boggs, the man who triggered it in, who had to come all the way in and get it. Thomas went. Pushed from behind, and let's take a look at it again. There's the drive, and then went going up for the rebound. And the foul is going to be on Lucas Wilkie. And Wilkie, after his first foul, checks right back out. Ravenna and Bergen each have played nine players, so plenty of substitutes. Jensen uses the glass, and Bergen takes the lead again at 9-8. to eight. So We're going to start going back and forth now in trading possessions, aren't we? It would appear so. Nobody's really establishing themselves. Uh-oh, somebody's a little woozy for Ravenna. Wow. The way he's reacting, it's almost like he got hit in the gut. Yeah. That's Trevor Saborn, the 5'10 sophomore. I'm kind of glad he a, didn't he do it. He took a couple <laughs> wobbly steps, didn't he? <laughs> there was a moment there I thought we were going to have a mess in aisle three. <laughs> Just kind of the way he was woozing out there. That, oh, no, this is not going to be good. I was about ready to play director and say, get the camera off him quick. <laughs> but he's okay. No mess. No fuss. We're back to action. <laughs> we just got word. Our, our director, our, Jim Carmichael, was ready to take it away. He was ready to order the camera and zoom in, zoom in now. <laughs> we need drama. <laughs> I don't think that's how you want to build the ratings. <laughs> Coming in for Bergen is Derek White. 9-8 our score, Knights lead it by one. Inbound, kick out. There's Baronic moving the ball, and 
had to get rid of it because he was about to come down with possession and it would have been a travel. And in doing so, threw it away. Yeah, he tried to save it to Baronic, but he had a little bit too much steam on the pass and was a little too tall. Actually, he was trying to save from going out of bounds. I think he saw Baronic there, perhaps, and wanted to get him the basketball. No such luck. Bergen has it. Tanner Worth spinning all the way in, but the foul's going to be on the floor, and Ravenna is already put Bergen in the one and one. Six minutes into this game. I think that's something Bergen is looking to capitalize on the fact that they know they can go to the free throw line and put in some points from the stripe. Seven fouls. Seven fouls in the first six minutes of this ballgame. But the first free throw missed, so no second. And the lead remains one point for Archbishop Bergen. A minute 50 left to play here in the first period. Ronick all the way around, finds his teammate on the weak side baseline, and Sean Payne lays it up and in, and one. Great feed by Veronic. He was able to draw the weak side help over, allowing the defender to leave Payne. Payne was able to receive the pass and go up strong. And then two Bergen teammates with Thomas Went getting the worst end of it, getting crashed to the ground by his teammate, Derek White. Three-point play completed, and it's 11-9, Ravenna. A minute 40 left here in the first quarter. Press broken, here come the Knights. Went, pull-up jumper. Too strong, and a rebound to the Blue Jays. Very clean game so far. Wow. Oh, here comes Mr. Long Range. A little short. He can hit him. We know firsthand. Hard pick coming into the front court. And he walked with it. Went, shuffled his feet, turns it over, and thus gives up a golden scoring opportunity for the Knights, who had the numbers on the offensive end, as rushing off the floor is Sean Payne being replaced by Brett Douglas. Sean Payne had a full sprint running off the floor. Next time he checks in, I hope we can catch that. <laughs> There's no shortage of effort. <laughs> you know, you realize, son, you're just coming off the floor. Nice cut. Layup good by Anderson. Some of these Ravenna scores are very textbook, fundamental basketball, almost Princeton style. And Tanner Worth retaliates with the drive and the layup. Ravenna up by two, under 40 seconds left here in the first quarter here so far. Little push off, no foul, and travel is called. Oh, there are some bodies hitting the floor yes, really are. hard on both ends. Pretty physical game. And Paul Baronic, a very animated discussion with one of our officials. As you see, Nick Jensen checking back in for the Knights. With 30 seconds left, we'll see if Bergen Holds for the last shot. First, they have to get across the timeline. They do. Kick out, open three. Rasmussen is short. Rebound, Bergen. Back up strong and count it. I think Jensen shot that on his way down. Let's after see. He went up for the shot. He did. Yeah, he was on his way down. And it almost looked like a clean block for a second by Douglas of Ravenna. But some good strength shown by Jensen to get the two to drop. He has six points on the game already. It's the eighth team foul on the Blue Jays in this first quarter. Jensen with six points and two rebounds already in the first quarter. Try to give Bergen their lead back. But it's short. So we'll remain tied with 10 seconds left. Klosterman, here he comes, and there it goes! Oh, ho, ho. Connor Baronic from the Big 12 logo. 
logo gives Ravenna a three-point lead. Hey, college doesn't just happen. You have to push yourself as you go through high school. Don't be afraid to take classes like Algebra 2, Biology, or a foreign language. They can help raise your ACT score and prepare you for college. I wasn't the smartest kid in high school, but I took the tough classes and I passed. So what are you waiting for? Push yourself over to your counselor's office and sign up for them. They won't be easy, but you'll be glad you did. We'll now proceed to the first item on the, today's agenda. Log on to anytnebraska.org slash capital to stay connected to what's happening in your state government. Nebraska Capital Live brings you daily coverage of important decisions from Nebraska's courts, legislative hearings, and events at the governor's office. In the office or at home, you can always stay informed with Nebraska Capital Live at anytnebraska.org slash capital. NBA range and then some by Connor Baronic to beat the first quarter buzzer as Ravenna leads 16 13. The play is known as shoot it from the X. Here's an alley oop and count it! Oh. oh! I thought for a moment Riley Baronic was going to try to top Connor Baronic with the shot, but that was an alley oop pass. Watch it again. About three feet behind where. Connor made his three, and then the undercut, and it goes in. I even think Spellerberg wasn't so sure that that was a shot. Like the fact that he had a defender climbing his back caught him off guard. Spellerberg called for the foul. It's a three-point play for Ravenna. My goodness. Bergen quick on the transition. Just like that, Ravenna has opened up a six-point lead as the three-point play was completed. Now can Bergen find retaliation? Layup, yes. Thomas Wynn. Shoot it from the X. <laughs> oh my, oh my. There's kind of a couple of highlight reel plays here in the last Already, yes. two minutes of action. So, uh, Archbishop Bergen now switch up to his zone. the corner. Riley Baronic short. Here comes Bergen. Tried to feed Rasmussen in the corner who was probably setting up for a three. Stolen away. Here comes Ravenna. Cyborg! Boy, Ravenna is so good at running the break. They really are. And the turnovers are down too. You know, when you push the floor, a lot of times you're prone to turn the basketball over, but not the case for Ravenna. They usually cash in with pretty good looks at least. Open three look there off the back of the iron. And Bergen's going to get the loose ball. And drive in. Charge is called. But that was definitely a charge. Saborn was down there in the paint. He was well set. He was waiting for that to happen. He gets the charge call, and we're headed the other way. So he's set again. now. He was set yep. almost a step or two ahead of Tough break, too, because they had the right play design. Open baseline cutter. But Chris Paulson and Bergen will come away empty after the foul. And that pass was too tall for Connor Baronic. And the sophomore sees it go off his hands and out of bounds. There's Paul Baronic. State champs in 05 and 09. Runner up in 06. Their fourth appearance here in the last six. All of them in class C2. Got two sons playing in this game. As another son that has a pretty well documented career so far that's still not complete. Right through the lane, layup, yes. Thomas went. Great Veronic, currently playing for the Nebraska basketball team, set out this year after transferring from UNK. Weaving his way through, hanging layup, no! And Derek White goes up hard and comes down hard. And he'll go to the free throw line. Second time we've seen Derek White cause a dent in the wood.
So Derek White will head to the line. White with three points. He'll get the second. Both teams in the one and one. With 5.40 to go before halftime. So I anticipate seeing a few free throws in this quarter. And a few, you mean quite a few. Not the second. Lead is three for the Blue Jays. Suborn all the way in. Veronic for three. No good. And a rebound for Worth. Worth working against Tyson Anderson. And now they'll move it around. White trying to free himself up underneath. There's really not much luck there. So instead, he'll kind of stay motionary, stationary, and Curtis Kammerer drives in for two. Kammerer not faced by the four blue jerseys right around the lane. Gets the bucket. Three on the way. Too long, but the offensive rebound, and they'll come back the other side and shoot three. In and out, no good by Riley Veronica. Blue Jays not bashful from beyond the arc. That was their sixth attempt already from three. Right through the lane, they'll call the walk there. Too many steps by Tanner Worth. 21-20, Ravenna with 4.39 left to play in the first half. Doc Sadler enjoying the action. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. But you've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered, even though you're out of state. So you relax, which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. One less thing to worry about. Programming on NET Television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District. Applauding the dedication, teamwork, and sportsmanship of Nebraska high school athletes. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Ravenna with a one point lead over Archbishop Bergen. Four lead changes and a tie so far. We've enjoyed in this Class C2 final. Four minutes, 39 seconds left to play here in the first half. And Ravenna to inbound. Pretty tight contest for the most part during the first half. One point lead for Ravenna. Been trading some leads back and forth here during the second quarter. Ravenna went on a nice run, but Bergen's right back. In. Here's another high lob. Well executed by Saborn. Now both high lobs to both alley oops came right out of timeouts. What did that tell you? Great coaching, great execution. Ravenna up by three and now on the run. Saborn blocked from behind. Loose ball. Bergen has it. They want to run. Knights not afraid to keep up with the pace. Dish down low. The weight, the foul, and one. Camera going up strong. Unselfish play, two in transition by Archbishop Bergen. See, Jensen, he could have taken it himself, but instead gives it up after the defender commits. And the end one. The foul on Klosterman is his third. Three point play complete. Game tied at 23. This is not unusual for Ravenna to see some guys in foul trouble. Three on the way, missed. Here comes Bergen again. And Box will slow it up. Under four minutes to go here in the first half. Kammerer. Evan Stober in the game. He's number 42, the big 6'7 junior down low on the paint. Looking for the basketball underneath, no such luck. Bergen taking a little time, pull up jumper, no. 
Rebound for Ravenna. Here come the Blue Jays. Klosterman thought about a three. Veronic waits for the defense to commit. And he'll go to the free throw line. Evan Stober with the foul. That's his first as we watch it again. Nice head fake. You notice a little, just a little slight body lean into the defender. So it's make sure you get that contact. The contact is assuring, pretty much assuring a spot at the free throw line. Ten points for Connor Baranek. Ravenna had some really impressive wins throughout the regular season, especially late in the year. Helped build some of that momentum heading into the state championships. They beat St. Paul by four. They beat Adam Central by 12. Adam Central made the Class B field here at the Devaney Center. 24-23, Ravenna by one. Ball popped in the air and stolen away. On the break, Provosta was bumped, but no call. And he'll shoot the long range three, short. Does anyone on this team take a custom three? Or do they all just shoot from wherever they are on the floor? Tip try, no. Fighting hard, layup good. Sean Payne in the right spot at the right time, worked hard for it. Ravenna's lead back by three. Furious pace here. With Bergen, again, not afraid to run with these Blue Jays. And I'm watching Sean Payne, number 44 in blue, that's for Ravenna. He's a hustle animal up and down the floor, continues to work for every rebound. Catch and shoot by Connor Baronic, but no points. Bergen for the lead, they'll call the block. And that's gonna mean free throws. Already above 10, and the foul will be on Sean Payne. We have to watch that foul situation for Ravenna. Klosterman, we mentioned, has three, and now also with three is Brett Douglas. Payne just picked up his second. Yeah, but on the positive, like you've mentioned before, John, Ravenna goes pretty deep in its bench, as does Archbishop Bergen. Ten deep. Wow, look at that. The list of participants. Typically, we see seven, eight. We're ten already for both teams. Second free throw coming up. Nick Jensen. Short. Game remains tied at 26. Pretty entertaining first half of basketball here. Very clean first half of basketball. Outside of the fouls, but you know, you kind of expect that with the aggressive nature of these two squads. That means in terms of efficiency and sure. making sure you get shots off. Pretty solid. Kick out for three. Saborn too long. Rebound Bergen. Again. Nice crossover dribble. Nice transition. One run. Tanner Worth. Jensen, swish. Good left-handed stroke just inside the top of the key. Stopped before the defender got close enough to him that he'd have a hand in his face. Small window, knocks down the J, and Bergen's back in front. It's our fifth lead change after our third tie. Pretty much what we expected. Two teams on paper, pretty even. And even before this game, John, I wouldn't even be able to put my thumb on who the favorite might be. Probably by recent reputation, you'd give Ravenna the edge because they're the defending champs in this class, but Bergen's already proven its worth. Entry pass, Saborn from 10, yes. But one of the rare times, a little bit more work for the open shot. 28-28. Ravenna, good low block defense, and a foul. Coming back the other way to shoot free throws. As Derek White picks up his first. And substitutions continue to shuffle in and out for both teams. Boggs and Rasmussen back in for Archbishop Bergen. And Ethan Zorb for Ravenna. Riley Baranek averages five points a game, but he missed the free throw. 
But because of the long carom, Ravenna gets a possession here. Will they hold for a final shot? They'll at least show it. Bergen right now content to sit back and wait. Veronix already got one buzzer beater in this first half, and it wouldn't be un too unusual to see him try to shoot it from that spot. Catch and release, here it comes. And a foul, they draw the contact and free throws. And it's gonna go on Derek White, and he's picked up his second foul here in relatively short time. So Ethan Zorb will go to the free throw line with four and a half seconds left in the first half. Zorb just eight points this season coming into the state tournament. Bergen will have four and a half seconds to do something with it after this free throw. Missed it, ball tipped around, it went out of bounds. Last touch by Ravenna going leaping into the crowd. We'll take a quick break and be back for the end of the first half in a moment. Live coverage of the 2010 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Southeast Community College offers more than 50 technical and academic transfer programs. Train for a new skill or retrain for an existing one. SCC provides hands-on learning. One Oak Energy Marketing. Natural gas from One Oak. The one in energy. Concordia University, Nebraska is a Christ-centered community ready to prepare students for a life of leadership and service. Where futures begin, community colleges, Central, Metro, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. Tied at 28. A good first half of basketball for both of these teams. We'll see. And obviously, the long wait through the day has helped as far as the energy level is concerned because neither of these teams appears to be fatigued by their third straight day of state basketball. Let's go down to Kevin, who's with Ravenna coach Paul Baronic. Coach, we're tied up at halftime. Your thoughts? Well, uh, it's a good basketball game. Good for fans, I think. Um, I just wish we'd make a few more shots. We're accustomed to doing that, and uh, they're giving us good looks. They're knocking them down, so you got to give credit to Bergen. Uh, they're playing strong, too, so. Your team looks, looks pretty comfortable in uh, transition tonight. Yeah, you know, we like to push it. So does uh, Bergen. Uh, that's the kind of game we like, push it up and down, full court pressure, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can have another half like that, plus one for our side. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck in the well, second half. Thanks for covering us. We're tied up 28-28 in the C2 championship game. Always there when the day begins. And we exist to generate your power. Deliver it safely and answer your call. We are always there through snow and storm. We reconnect lives and make things brighter for your family and ours. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. You've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered, even though you're out of state. 
so you relax, which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. Hey, college doesn't just happen. You have to push yourself as you go through high school. Don't be afraid to take classes like Algebra 2, Biology, or a foreign language. They can help raise your ACT score and prepare you for college. I wasn't the smartest kid in high school, but I took the top classes and I passed. So what are you waiting for? Push yourself over to your counselor's office and sign up for them. They won't be easy, but you'll be glad you did. Class C2 halftime, we're tied at 28. Archbishop Bergen and Ravenna, the 10-11 coaches all-state team as voted on by the coaches across the state. Ballots went out, coaches responded. Here's the all-state team in Class C2. Jordan Hackinson from Sandy Creek, Josh Reinertson from Gibbon, Connor Baronica of Ravenna, Jeremy Yostin of West Point CC, and Kendall Glidden of Dundee County Stratton, a team that made it here to the state tournament. A pretty good overall class in Class C2. No representation of Axtell. Remember, that was the one seed in the class heading into the championships. Halftime tied at 28. Back with the first half stats right after this on NET and 1011. by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Winner! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. Programming on NET Television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, applauding the dedication, teamwork, and sportsmanship of Nebraska high school athletes. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. This moment of serenity is brought to you by The Buddha, the story of one man's journey to awakening. Coming in April to NET1. Halftime in Class C2, Bergen and Ravenna are tied at 28 first half numbers of this championship game. Field goal percentage, Bergens is much better, but Ravenna just one of 12 from three-point range. Rebounds are pretty much even. Turnovers, pretty clean game here so far. First half highlights, and there were quite a few highlight reel plays for Ravenna, but for Archbishop Bergen, pretty good fundamental basketball as they were led by Nick Jensen with nine points. As we take a look at what went down in the first half, Thomas White goes in for two of his six. Rasmussen short on the three, but there's Nick Jensen to clean up and get the harm. 
And a good drive there and a basket by Thomas Went for Ravenna. Well, there's Connor Baronic. And then you're going to see Baronic. This was at the end of the first quarter. But here was the play of the half right here. Saborn, boing. Down hard goes John Klosterman, but it somehow went in the basket. I still was convinced that that was a shot. Well, it looked like it, uh, but it, you it, could it, tell. I mean, then that was the first of two times they ran that play in the game. That one, it just so happened it followed the other long three that we saw. And both times came right out of a timeout. So, you know, every time that there's a breakage of play, don't go far. Make sure you see it when they resume action. Absolutely. they Just the way they drew it up in Ravenna. We'll be back. Second half coming up. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming on NET television is provided in part by the Dr. Tom and Dorothy Hallstrom Inspire Nebraska Athletics Endowment. I think that the mission of NET, which is educational programming, whether it's radio or television, it's a very important thing uh, with funding cutbacks in, in public schools and other areas. The gap in education is growing and NET becomes even more important in those areas. Through a significant gift to the NET endowment, Steve Keen is ensuring that NET will educate Nebraskans for generations to come. Call me personally if you'd like to consider making a gift to the NET endowment. Twenty-eight, twenty-eight. What'd you tell your boys at locker room? Well, I, I thought the big thing for us was to continue to defend the three-point line. Um, uh, the one thing we did give up a little bit too much of was offensive rebounds. Uh, they got seven offensive rebounds there in the first half. We'd like to limit that a little bit more to about four or five. Um, you know, but we did hold them to one of twelve shooting from the three. Um, that's real important. Um, I like how we're attacking uh, their pressures. We're getting some easy transition buckets, and we got to keep doing that. Guy, we got to be aggressive to the rim. We'll let you get to the second half. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Again, it's 28-28 as we're about to start the second half in the C2 title game. Going to the second half. Archbishop Bergen from Fremont. Ravenna from Ravenna tied at 28 as we get ready for the second half. The foul situation, got to keep an eye on that after 
Klosterman picked up his third. Douglas has three for Ravenna, but they've played 11 deep in this game. Yeah, that's about everybody on the roster. Pretty much. Nice glasses, by the way. In the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, but then again, Archbishop Bergen's colors are green. So, so we're off and running. Here we go. Second half is underway. And the final half of basketball here on a very entertaining championship Saturday. We've had five lead changes. We've had four ties. They look for White, who came away with it after all that traffic to get through. And Derek White. Gives Bergen the lead at 30 to 28. How'd he get through that double team? The Blue Jays were packing it in, packing it in down low. Still, White got the basketball and was able to squeeze past both defenders and score. Spellerberg popped it into the air, knocked it out of bounds. So Ravenna will have to inbound. You got to watch this play. But instead, <laughs> instead they go backwards. It's anytime. The ball is thrown anywhere in the vicinity of the hoop. You got to be careful. Look at the spacing by Ravenna. Enough spacing, but still not coming up with the three pointers. Now one for 13 beyond the arc. You know, for Ravenna to be shooting that poorly from three and be down by two, that's that's an okay deal. Drive and a one-hander missed by Jensen. Moronic works against White. Out to his brother who drains the three. Riley Moronic. Riley with the fist bump. He'd been waiting for that one for quite some time. Several attempts by Riley during the game. Just didn't get him to fall until that one. His first three points of the game. Ravenna up 31 30. High lob White. Yes. And a foul, count the basket. Good pass by Spellerberg. May not be as pretty as the alley-oop, but the same result applies. Yeah, and good job by White. Sealing up front, good catch, and you know, Baronic was coming down. He was gonna go up to try to get the entry pass. And that's right when White went up with the basketball, gets the and one. So here's Derek White with six points, still on six points. Really impressed with White's play. Good all-around game down to the post. Actually, eight points. They just put it up on the board. Eight for White. He averages 12. Turnover. Here come the Knights. Tried the bounce pass, looking for Boggs, but Ravenna was in the way. Riley Baronic thought about another long-range three. Klosterman, up and under, yes. Again, some of these Ravenna drives are pretty fearless because so much of Archbishop Bergen's defense is inside the lane. There's a lot of white jerseys around there, but still Ravenna attacks. 33-32. The eighth lead change in the game. Yeah, we had the Blue Jays up by six early in the second quarter. After those consecutive three-point plays, but Bergen closed in a hurry, and now it's come back. Oh, 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 or Connor Baronic. That one was a short three for him. 36-32. Offensive foul. That was a pretty easy call as Nick Jensen just threw the arm out, threw the defender aside, and Ravenna's going to come right back. Yeah, you see the shoulder dip down, and that's the first indicator. And the second that that forearm went forward, like you said, that was a pretty easy call. So now Ravenna with a chance to build on this four-point lead. And sticking with that zone defense. You see Ravenna showing some good patience. They're working it around the perimeter, side to side. But because Baronic is so apt to taking long threes, they have to extend that zone out. And Worth has to come out and watch Baronic to make sure he doesn't get an unguarded shot.
Taking time on this possession to slow the pace down. Nice defensive stand here by the Knights. We're going to make Arch uh, Ravenna work for this basket. Skip pass. Second, was time, Aaron. second time over the past few minutes, we've seen Ravenna take some ill advised passes. I wonder if fatigue has anything to do with it. That shot blocked, but White comes away with it after the block by Anderson. So Bergen will reset. Four minutes to go here in the third quarter. But a turnover. Pass was a little behind its intended target. Now here's Baronic to finish on the break. Six point game. Worth went for the steal, couldn't come up with it, so instead Baronic gets the score. Wide open three. It's short. And a foul on Boggs. Timeout on the floor. 3.29 left in the third as Ravenna has owned this third quarter. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. Blazing fastballs, spectacular strikeouts, fan pandemonium, and an eye-catching name. Take an intimate glimpse at Nebraska native and now New York Yankees pitcher Jabba Chamberlain, the people, places, and events which have influenced his road to success in Yesterday's The Jabba Chamberlain Story. Sunday night at 6.30 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Saturday 2010 Paul Baronic very accustomed to being here the fourth appearance for Ravenna in the last six title games they've won two and lost one trying to make it three and one tonight they've got a six point lead as they have owned this quarter ten to four over Archbishop Bergen. Turnover. Here it pass by Klosterman. Remember Klosterman playing with three fouls. As is Douglas for Ravenna. All the way through. No one there. Tanner Worth just dribble and drive. Worth has six points. Much needed basket for Archbishop Bergen. Near travel. Douglas. Again, that Archbishop Bergen defense extending itself. We've seen some intensity crank up, but Man. still. <laughs> We've been able to break it down. Klosterman drive from left to right. Gives Ravenna back their six point lead. If Norfolk's watching this game, they're going, you know, those are the kind of shots we were missing. What, the free throws? No, the points in the paint. Yeah, the three, three foot shots, huh? Granted, a little more contested Norfolk was against Omaha Central. Using the glass, Thomas went. Whistle away from the ball, and that was a timeout taken by Paul Baronic. And that timeout comes with 1.55 left to play here in the third period. Ravenna with a four point lead. Interesting quarter here. In the early minute, I felt like Archbishop Bergen was really going to establish it itself as the, you know, the go getter here, the tempo setter. But then Ravenna had the nice back to back three point play. They had a three and then a three point play. 
they jumped out to a six-point lead. I was like, oh, okay, Ravenna's got it. Now I'm getting the sense that it's back to the Bergen side of things here. Just yeah. had a nice bucket on the uh, one side of the floor, and then they come down. A nice defensive set. You see that they're really picking it up on their aggression when they don't have the basketball. Yeah, neither team has been able to gain a lot of separation from the other. Eight lead changes and four ties. You take a look at some of the Bergen fans assembled here tonight. Ball There's the defense. Away. Here comes the breakaway. Layup good. Tanner Worth takes it in, and Bergen's cut the deficit down to two. The Knights are not letting Ravenna settle in when they have the basketball. Even right there, I know a foul is going to be called, but still the fact that Baronic got the basketball and right on his hip was a defender. That can be frustrating when you're on the offensive side of the basketball. Whether you have it or not, you're working off the screen or whatever. You have somebody dogging you the whole time. It can get mentally wearing. So Bergen certainly playing for the long haul. Remember in the first quarter how many fouls were racked up by both teams? Well, this quarter is much different. Nice look underneath and a wide open Connor Baronic lays it up and in. He's got 17. It's 42-38. Combined fouls here in this quarter, four. Teams were in free throw shooting situations in the first quarter in this game. Oh, and they're gonna get the foul here on Ravenna. And it'll go against Connor Baronic. And that is his second, let's watch it again. Yeah, went, went right at him. Baronic's arguing on the rebound there that he was straight up. You know, that's such a hard call to make. Yeah, it is. Rasmussen gets the inbound from the corner, and now they'll move it around. Worth takes it up and through. Strong first step. Good quarter here for Worth. He's got 10. 42-40 Ravenna with a minute to play here in the third. Bergen's right there, down by just a deuce. Remember, they trailed by six not too long ago. Spinning, shooting, but missing. Look at this. Staying with it, Saborn. I think Saborn shot that as he was falling down. Well, that wouldn't be the first time we've seen that happen in this game. Ravenna just makes some baskets that kind of catch you off guard, make you scratch your head. Like, how'd it go in? Backdoor cut, here's Worth. Good pass, Went Worth. Wentworth. <laughs> two last names. <laughs> two points, two point deficit for Archbishop Bergen. 12 seconds left. Saborn looks down low, and look at that. All the way through, Baronic was driving, went all the way out of bounds. Well, Bronick, he literally just put a shoulder into him and drove him like he was a blocking sled. Watch this. Bronick's trying to get to the basketball. Well, and actually, I take it back a little bit because when, I didn't realize, because I'm watching from the other side, but that the arm was out. So that's why I thought he had thrown his shoulder into his body and was blown, but it was actually the, uh, the arm, the extended arm of Worth. Three seconds, two seconds, entry pass. Ravenna fouls, the fans wanted a foul called there. Yeah. Well, the officials have kind of lax, relaxed a little bit. And Bergen's not even going to try for a last shot. It will be Ravenna basketball when we start the fourth quarter. Ravenna leads by two. Programming on NET television is provided in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FDIC. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services.
Well, back at the Devaney Center, are you ready for one more quarter, Kevin? How can we not be? We've survived. Well, uh, at this point, our brains are kind of mush, so the math is kind of fuzzy, but 23 quarters four plus an overtime. There you go. I'm not, I'm not going to do the math. This is the sixth game? Yes, it is. It is the sixth game, but an entertaining one. Absolutely. It's been one of the better ones so far. Veronic kicks out. Big Brother shoots short. Have not called Riley Veronic's name for a while. Still only four from, or excuse me, uh, three for 16 beyond the arc are the Blue Jays. Bergen still looking for their first tray. They're 0 for 7 and have been short on just about every one. Tried the entry pass. White comes up with it, and he's going to be whistled with the charge. Leaned in too much, pushed off. I That's the see third how that foul on White. I kind of want to see how that happened. Did he throw a forearm down there? I thought so. There's a lot of traffic between me and the, and the play. I wasn't watching the monitor. It looked like he did throw out an, uh, an arm. So the third foul on Jensen White, or a third foul on White. Jensen also went three. That shot was partially blocked. Now the other way. Bergen again not afraid to run, and look at that effort as Klosterman leaps in, denies the kickout pass. Klosterman trailing the play. He's able to get and disrupt the pass. And again, it seems like every stoppage of play, we're having substitutions, especially for Ravenna. You get the sense that Ravenna practices have a, involve a lot of money. Yes. You better be in shape to play on this and Those team. scrimmages have to be pretty intense, too, knowing that they go so deep. Drive in and a score. Nick Jensen with 11. Morgan has tied it up. Spinning in. Saborn in traffic. Shot blocked. White with a rebound, and Bergen can take the lead. Yeah, White's having a really nice game for Archbishop Bergen. White working hard down low against Payne. In and out. Went. And a foul. Well, worth, I beg your pardon. And Veronic. Nope, it's going to be on uh, Sean Payne. Fouls on Payne. They say from behind, not Veronic. From in front. Either way, it's free throws. Remember, this is giving the Knights some problems throughout the game at the free throw line. Now 5 of 11, under 50%. They're at 45. Tanner Worth misses the second. But it's 45-44, our ninth lead change of the night. At one point, Ravenna was up six here in the second half. That's about as much spread as we have seen in this game. Real methodical game for Archbishop Bergen. Ravenna's had a lot of those highlight-worthy plays, you know? Archbishop Bergen doesn't have as many, not as flashy, but they're just sticking to some of the basics, and it's doing the trick as the Knights are up by one. Derek White denies the entry pass. It'll still be Ravenna basketball when we come back. Farmers rely on it. Businesses depend on it. Families trust it. It is public power. And at NPPD, we know Nebraskans don't take it for granted. That's why every dollar is reinvested into the system. The power plants, transmission lines, and utility employees that deliver safe and reliable electricity to you. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel.
Welcome back. 5.52 to play. Fourth quarter. Fremont Bergen 45, Ravenna 44. Here's the inbound. Saborn outside, Riley or Britt Connor Baronic. So many Baronics in this building tonight. Klosterman. Connor all the way through, head fake up, and Ender scores. Good strong take. I thought that Connor maybe got a little bit too deep into the defense. Nine points, not 19 points. Foul is on the floor. That's number four against the Blue Jays. No shot. And it's going to go on Connor Baronic. That is his third. Got some fouls to start monitoring now as we get close to the five minute mark. Klosterman, Baronic, Payne all have three for Ravenna. And the two big fellas for Archbishop Brigham, Jensen White, they each have three also. Time to time, these teams get very patient on their possessions, but that time the drive by Jensen was denied. The ball knocked away. The turnover against the Knights now running the break. It's Klosterman who joins the party in double figures. He's got 11, and Ravenna's leads back up to three. Another one of those Ravenna runs. Bergen really has to temper it now, try to put it into it. Who's going to come up with the answer? In this second half, we've seen a lot of Tanner work. He has the ball right now, takes it to the baseline. And he was fouled, moving across. And a foul will be on Sean Payne. That's his fourth. That's team foul number five against the Blue Jays. Jensen nearly got a little sloppy on the dribble. Kick over in the corner. A three on the way. It's short. Coming in though for the rebound. Oh, and he didn't come up with a basket. Spellerberg had a golden opportunity. Yeah, he wants that one back. His body language is pretty frustrated with the fact that he didn't convert on that. Boy, when I saw him come flying in there, I thought that is an easy two, but a finger roll. Not enough roll into the cylinder. Look for Bergen to really crank up the defensive intensity again. That's what they've been able to do to quell these Ravenna runs. Veronic. Guarded. Kicks out. Open three. Yes! Klosterman! Just the fourth three made in this game for Ravenna, and it comes at a big moment here as the lead extended back out to six with under four minutes to play. Worth outside, Jensen, Bergen needs a retaliation bucket, and they finally get an open three that goes down. That's the counterpunch for Archbishop Bergen to come right down the floor. Great confidence to know they can score and knock down the big three. 51-48, Ravenna leads by three. Up and under, he walked. Anderson just trying to move, get position, shuffled the feet as he was looking to turn toward the basket. That three by Jensen, the first in nine attempts for Archbishop Bergen. Substitution coming in. It's Payne back on Payne. the floor. He's got four fouls in number. Full court press for the Blue Jays. Into the front court for Boggs. Jensen all the way in. White with the rebound. No! Two open looks. And wow, the frustration. Nick Jensen really upset. He was dangerously close to picking up a technical by slamming the ball into the ground. He caught himself at the last moment. We'll be back. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. 
You're watching NET Television. Hi, I'm Michelle Payone Casanova. Did you know that you can make a charitable gift to NET through securities such as stocks, bonds, or mutual funds? Such gifts can be structured to result in a significant tax savings for you. Ask your trusted advisors about the advantages of giving securities to the NET endowment. Feel free to call me or visit our website for more information. Ravenna going for back-to-back -back championships. Bergen going for their second in three years. 3.08 to play. Here's Nicholas Jensen. That timeout, maybe to cool off after that foul. And here we go, back to action. Ravenna challenge to try to break the press, and they do. Straight up man-to-man -man for Archbishop Bergen. Washington look for a cutter, not there. Baronic spins his way in, backed his way out, threw out an elbow and turned the ball over. Paul Baronic can't bear to look. <laughs> I think that's the last thing he wanted to have happen is turn the basketball over. I think he wanted at least a shot at that point in time. So Bergen, in a one possession game, down three. Jensen wants the ball, has it. White trying to post up. Worth. Winds his way in, kicks out. Jensen open three. No good. Clayton Look actually got a little body after he had released. Now here comes that defensive pressure. Bergen's gonna have to be aggressive here. Next foul does put Ravenna at the line for the one and one. Still plenty of time here. Don't have to foul right away, obviously. But Ravenna also is not going to get too greedy right now. And reach in, look out. Now close to the dangerous. tables. Wow, that was close. That's right, not far from us, and Connor Bronick's head was really close to one of these tables. There's no padding on the table. No. It's, it's an old wooden table, and I mean old. This thing has been used for multiple state championships here at the Devaney Center. There's right. no doubt about that. So he came, that was dangerous. He that came was, very close to yes, getting the back he of his head on the corner of that table. Because these tables are about knee high, and that's about where Bronick's head was as he fell to the floor. Woo. All Glad right. everybody's okay. Patrick Rasmussen coming back into the game for Archbishop Bergen and at the free throw line. This will be one and one. 19 points. And in and out, no good! Oh, that was close to being Ravenna basketball as Anderson came in from behind and almost took a possession away from Archbishop Bergen. Who will be the hero in the final minute and 35 seconds? Figuring out Worth, Went, White. Those are the three guys you expect to have the basketball on this possession for Archbishop Bergen. Thomas Went, Rasmussen. Bear in mind, Bergen only has one three-pointer the entire game. They're down by three and need a big shot. Over in the corner, guarded there, Rasmussen was. Good job by Payne working in there defensively on White. Yeah, White's really fighting for position, but that's Payne. A drive in, too strong off the glass, tip, no! Rebound, Cyborg. 50 seconds left. Bergen denied on that possession, and now time running off the clock. They're gonna have to think about fouling here. I think Ravenna's going to be content to hold the basketball. I'm really surprised we haven't seen a foul come yet. Now the foul call well, coming That's from why the they weren't fouling, because that was so close to being a steal yeah. by Archbishop Bergen. They were playing for the big steal. Boggs nearly got it, but they whistled the foul. So now I understand why they didn't foul. 
But still, a lot of time came off the clock. And with a team that has not shot the ball well from the outside the arc, this becomes important that Cyborn miss this first free throw for Bergen. He's getting the second. Nine points for Trevor Saborn. And a timeout, Bergen. With 31 seconds left, still plenty of timeouts. That's the first timeout that Bergen has taken in this game. Wow. That was a big time free throw, too, by Saborn. Ravenna just four of nine from the free throw line. But the one that fell there was pretty clutch, makes it a two possession ball game. Well, with 31 seconds left, Bergen knows it can't come back all the way with one possession, but they need a good possession and a relatively quick score as Ravenna will be asked to shoot free throws. Now on the evening, just four of nine from beyond the arc are the Blue Jays. So just like in our last game, free throws have not necessarily been free. Yeah, Coach Paulson in the huddle right now for Archbishop Bergen. We'll take a look at Paul Baronic. I think Chris Paulson's right now mapping out the scenario. Make or miss, we just need a score. It doesn't have to be a three. Let's work some offense. It's going to have to be very quick. Put up a shot. If you don't get it, you got to foul and send him back to the free throw line. This game's far from over, but Bergen's going to need some help from Ravenna missing some free throws, and they're going to have to get some quick scores. 31 seconds or less. Second free throw coming up for Saborn. Get into the front court. Bergen's got to get points quick. Kick out, three on the way. Got it! Timeout, Bergen. 20 seconds left. Two point game. That's big time worth from the left side, dropping the triple. 53 51. He averages six points a game. He has more than doubled that. And most of it coming in the second half. Catch and shoot. Everybody collapsed in for Ravenna, so Baronic, Klosterman both had to try to play some catch up, but at that point it was too late as Worth hits the three. Now Archbishop Bergen likely going to deny the pass, try to get a steal, get the basketball. If they don't, need to foul quickly and send Ravenna on the free throw line. Well, how many times have we seen it when Bergen has come back from a deficit? It's been their defense that has done it for them. Obviously, the biggest pressure situation right now with 20 seconds left. One thing I think you better watch for is a breakaway and a long baseball pass. Ravenna can be very aggressive on these inbounds, but instead, they'll well, inbound short, and there's the foul that will send Klosterman to the free throw line. Now, this is the last of the one and one. Klosterman with 14 points, one for one at the line. Bergen obviously hoping for a first shot miss right here. Yeah, and if a miss, Bergen's going to need to get that rebound. Rebounding has been really tight throughout the contest. The Knights have 30 boards. Ravenna right there at 28. So even if this is a miss, Bergen needs to get that rebound, and they'll have to hurry down the floor. Timeout taken by Archbishop Bergen. They have two left. Ravenna has four. Here's something to consider, too, not that you necessarily need to worry about it, but Ravenna has a foul to give. They do have a foul to give, so they could stand to play aggressive, make or miss on the free throw. They can stand to play aggressive in the backcourt, and they don't run the risk of sending Bergen to the line with a chance to tie yeah, because but of that foul to give. What that would do is would create a stoppage of play, which likely would allow Archbishop Bergen to go back to the huddle and draw something up. True, but right. but it does give you a chance to take a chance, Absolutely. especially in the backcourt. Absolutely. Now the free throws, these are huge. Make make none. Bergen has a chance to win it. Make one. Bergen has a chance to tie it. Make two. 
It's a two possession ball game and that's pretty challenging with 16.8 seconds left. Fans for both schools are on their feet. We're down to the final 16.8 seconds and a big free throw here from John Klosterman. A one and one. They get the second. Ravenna has really turned it on with their free throw shooting here in the second half. Rasmussen, a better three-point shooter, comes in for Jensen, who did have a three earlier in this quarter. This one would make it a two-possession game. He's got it. That's the big one. Now Bergen needs a quick, quick score. Worth into the front court. All the way across, Rasmussen. White, fumbled away. Here it comes. This could be it for the state championship. Basket's no good, but with only four and a half seconds left, it's free throws. And Ravenna fans were wanting a goaltending call on that because, again, you can even look at the net right now and the way it is positioned. Clearly, a hand got caught up in the net, altering the rim. That's technically a goaltending call. Technically, but the ball was coming back out. It wasn't going to go down. Either way, Ravenna with the free throw. It's academic now, especially in high school basketball when the clock does not stop on a make. It is virtually impossible for the Knights to rally. And Ravenna, a repeat in Class C2. Yeah, it was really unfortunate when Archbishop Bergen had the basketball there after the free throws that White lost the basketball, didn't even get a shot off. Right. That's gonna probably stick up in his crawl for a little bit. I'm gonna eat him alive, but White has to keep in mind the success that the Knights have throughout the season. He's a senior, 12 points a contest, six rebounds a contest, a, a pretty solid, a workmanlike effort here tonight on the championship stage with eight points for White, so. Well, it'll be a tough way to lose. It's the first time for Bergen that they have lost in a championship game, 3-0, and with wins in 1980, 87, and 2008 for Ravenna. This would be a third title in six years and back-to-back -back crowns for the reigning kings of C2 basketball. And on the floor for Ravenna, fan favorite Joshua Crowell. He's one of the seniors. And still some key contributors coming back next season for Ravenna, so don't count them out in the talk for next year. Anderson has the second, 57-51. White for three, it's off, and that's it. Ravenna repeats. And the Blue Jays rejoice again. The Baronic boys with their father win another C2 championship. Break for Archbishop Bergen. Back with the medal presentations after this. Programming on NET television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, generating electricity with a balanced mix of energy resources, including wind. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, NebraskaSoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, providing cable, internet, and digital phone service for your home or your business. Welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center as Ravenna claims a repeat crown in Class C2, 57-51 decision over Archbishop Bergen. Time for our final awards presentations of the night, starting with the Sportsmanship Trophy. The Nebraska Coaches Association and the Nebraska Athletic Administrators Association are proud to support the positive aspects of high school athletics. Good sportsmanship is a key factor in our philosophy, and at this time we are pleased to present the Class C2 Sportsmanship Award. The trophies are graciously donated by Awards Unlimited and underwritten by the Nebraska Independent College Foundation. Making the presentations are NCA Vice President Rocky Rule of Wayne High School, 
and Michelle Egger of Schuyler High School. Presenting the trophy and representing the Nebraska Independent College Foundation is Terry Brown. The Class C2 Sportsmanship Award winner is Johnson County Central High School. Receiving the award is Jack Moles, the superintendent, and senior player, Justin Kosmicki. Congratulations, Johnson County Central High School. And now, the Nebraska School Activities Association is pleased to present medals and trophies to both of these outstanding teams. The awards will be presented by NSAA Board of Control members Kent Hawley of Mitchell and Max Kroger of Ord. They'll be assisted by U.S. Bank Representative Scott Duncan. First, here are the awards for the 2010 Class C2 runner-up from Archbishop Bergen High School. Well, head coach Chris Paulson and your assistant step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each member of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 10, Matt Slicester. Number 21, Tanner Worth. Number 24, Thomas Wendt. Number 33, Curtis Kammerer. Number 42, Evan Stober. Number 44, Jackson Mark. Number 55, Grant Meyergaard. Number three, Josh Boggs. Number 13, Patrick Rasmussen. Number 25, John Spellerberg. Number 34, Nick Jensen. And number 45, Derek White. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Archbishop Bergen High School, 2010 Class C2 State Runner-Up. And now, to the champions from Ravenna High School. First, head coach Paul Baranek, we have a special coaches award for you. And now coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 12, Spencer Kromosta. Number 22, Josh Crowell. Number 25, Tyson Anderson. Number 32, Mark Kromosta. Number 42, Ethan Zorb. Number 43, Lucas Wilkie. Number 44, Sean Payne. Number 20, John Klosterman. Number 21, Trevor Suborn. Number 30, Connor Barane. Number 
number 31, Riley Baranek. Number 41, Brett Douglas. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the state championship trophy. Congratulations to the Blue Jays of Ravenna High School, the 2010 Class C2 State Basketball Champions. Ravenna and Class C2, their third state championship in the last six years. Congratulations to the Blue Jays. We will hear from them coming up. But meantime, runner-up coach Chris Paulson of Archbishop Bergen is with Kevin. Coach, after losing the lead in the third quarter, you guys hung tough, just couldn't get over the top. No, there were some key possessions there in the fourth quarter where, uh, you know, we missed a couple bunnies, we missed a couple putbacks, and and they came down and answered. Uh, they made some plays when they needed to, and we were just, un, you know, just didn't fortunately make them at crucial times. We didn't shoot free throws well enough to win this thing. Uh, that's really what it come down to. Did fatigue play a factor down the stretch? You know, I don't think so. I think both teams looked like uh, they they had a lot of energy still at the end. You know, maybe we did a little bit, but, um, you know, you got to give them credit. They're, they're a very good basketball team. I think uh, our kids uh, fought hard. They played tough. Um, you know, they made the plays at the end, and we didn't, unfortunately. Runner-up finish, not what you really wanted, but still a pretty good season. It is, no question about it. We're, we're very excited about that. Obviously, we're disappointed in the fact we didn't, uh, didn't get the big one, but you know what? We lost to a quality basketball team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my kids. These kids come a long way. My seniors, their sixth and seventh graders didn't win a game. They did a great job maturing as basketball players and as men, so uh, uh, it's a great way to go out on a, on a state runner-up. Coach, thank you. Class act, fine season. Right, thank you very much. Archbishop Bergen falls short in the Class C2 championship game. The champions, Ravenna, will hear from them after this. This is NET Television. More channels and more choices. I'm the leader of the band. Irish or not, everyone can celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It's a nostalgic parade of Irish favorites. Hear the world's greatest, sing Ireland's most beloved ballads and folk songs. Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment. An unforgettable concert performance. Spend your St. Paddy's Day with Irish eyes are smiling at 7, and Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment at 8.30. Wednesday night on NET1 and NETHD. Hi, I'm Jeff Beckman. I've often heard from viewers like you about NET programs that were deeply moving or provided critical information at just the right time or even changed lives. For over 50 years, NET television has inspired and educated Nebraskans. What does NET bring to your life? How can you make sure that NET television is there for future generations just as it's been there for you and your family? Leaving an estate gift to the NET endowment is one way to do that. I'd be happy to visit with you about the many charitable giving options available. Call or email me to discuss an estate gift to NET or visit our website for more information. But my Daniel O'Donnell celebrates his 10th PBS special, showcasing two decades of career highlights. Daniel O'Donnell shares the sounds and the beauty of his homeland. Love sick fool that's blind and just can't see. Sunday afternoon beginning at 3.30 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Plus find out how you can get tickets to his concert in Omaha. Back table side for one final time. Archbishop Bergen falls six points short as Ravenna repeats in Class C2, 57 to 51. Final numbers on this game, two teams almost identical. Field goal shooting, rebounds the same, turnovers about the same. So really it was a very evenly played game. We had 10 lead changes in this contest. Individually, Connor Baronic leading the state champs with 19 points. John Klosterman had 16. Trevor Cyborn had 10. Three players in double figures for the Blue Jays. For Bergen, Tanner worth 10 points above his season average. 16 points tonight on 7 of 11 shooting. Nick Jensen had 14 for Archbishop Bergen. Before we go backstage, a couple of notes. 
Some new records set in this year's state tournament. Three-point field goals. Jalen Bradley of Norfolk takes the Class A record. He's got 13 threes in this tournament. Lars Backward from Hay Springs has the new state record holder in Class D2 with 12 threes made in this game. Kiefer Messersmith of Hay Center ties the Class D2 record for three three-point field goals in a single game with six. And congratulations, Austin Kotzer wraps up a great career from Ewing. He will be 12th all-time on the state tournament scoring chart with 189 points. With that said, let's meet our champions from Ravenna. Kevin? Coach Barana, congratulations. You guys go back to back. Thanks. I, don't, I just, the guys will tell you I don't get speechless very often, but I'm almost there. And uh, I'm just proud of these guys. And I got to give credit to my, uh, you know, my Lord and Savior. He helps me every day. And uh, I'm just lucky to have these fellas. How does this title differ from last year's, if at all? Well, you know, we lose a couple inspirational leaders in Eric Johnson and Matt Mingus, but uh, it's, they became vocal leaders as a group. And uh, again, I'm just, Extremely proud of these guys. I can't say enough about them, and it's just different. Everyone's different. Every team's different, but I never get tired of it. If, if I do, somebody needs to kick me. <laughs> Paul, this was tied at halftime. They took a lead. Then you guys took the lead, and you didn't let go of it. Well, our thing's been uh, we're going to find a way to win, and the other thing we've been doing is talking about finishing strong. You know, We stole a little bit from the uh, uh, New Orleans Saints, a little bit in their, their motivation, and uh, you know, I'm an art teacher, so we're always creatively stealing something. So, Can you give us a little insight on some of those art little tactics, I suppose? Yeah, you know, I'm a visual guy, so I have to literally take people through things and, and then give them pictures, and then it helps them. So, And I need visuals, too, because their coach is not very bright. So, <laughs> I think that, that their coach is just fine. Uh, Paul, what does this mean for uh, you guys you well, know, yeah. as a family, as a program, as a community? As a family, uh, it's, it's awesome, it's special because I have my sons involved, but actually I have a lot of surrogate sons that are just really good, you know, and, and they're just great kids. And uh, even though, you know, uh, we have the community behind us and everything, I think it's even more special for them at times. Good deal, Paul Barana, congratulations. We'll meet some of your players now here and have uh, one of your sons come in, Riley Baronic. Riley, big three. I mean, the shots weren't falling for you, but you finally got the big one to drop in that nice run of the third quarter. Yep. I just shot it with a bunch of confidence that time because I wanted to score in my last game, and I did, so I'm happy with that. Was that the difference, just shooting with a little bit more confidence? Yeah, I think that definitely was the difference because <laughs> I wasn't making any, and I had to tell myself it's going in, it's going in, and it finally did. In the fourth quarter, could you guys sense that you might be taking this thing home? Uh, I never sense anything right <laughs> away. Um, I'm the last one to say that we're going to win, but it happened, and I'm very happy. So, Riley, congratulations. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. we'll let you hand off the trophy and bring in one of your teammates, one of the workhorses tonight, Sean Payne. Sean, a lot of hard work down in the post. Just talk us through how physical it was down yeah, there. I don't know. It was just like any other game. Just got to battle through it. That's, that's how basketball is now. But you left it all out on the court tonight, didn't you? Just, you know, how much energy were you spending out there? Oh, uh, we just we just spend all the energy we can. That's what our coach tells us every day in practice: hustle, hustle, hustle. That's you just what we did. You guys are enjoying this one, aren't you? Yeah, it feels great. Senior year, it's a lot better than last year. Perfect, Sean. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, next up, Trevor Saborn, a sophomore, ten points, five rebounds. Congratulations. Uh, what does this mean for you? Oh, gosh, it just means a lot doing this as a sophomore, you know, getting two more years at it, you know, it'd be nice. Quite the scene there after the uh, clock struck zero, you guys were all jumping around on the floor, you know, what were the emotions at that point in time? It's something you can't really describe, you just pick a word and it's anything, you're happy, you know, it's amazing, you're just excited. Where do you guys go from here? You already have two in a row, is there a third one potentially in store? We hope so, we hope so. We're going to get back to work, you know, next season. Good deal. Thank you. Congratulations. John Klosterman, one of the outgoing seniors, got to be a part of last year's championship. Now this year's championship. Are they equally as satisfying or does one stand out? I know you're a senior, so. I, I think this one stands out more because last year I was just a junior and this year to end it with a win, it's amazing. What's been the recipe to success for you guys over the past two years? Well, we, we lost a game in the district finals and since then our motto has been to finish strong. And from there, that's really motivated us. And that's what we did today, finish strong. Perfect. John, thank you. Congratulations. Connor Bronick will come in next for Ravenna. Connor, uh, Ravenna, Connor, 
finished with 19 points. Look at that, 12 of eight, at eight of 12 field goals. Not too bad performance on the uh, big stage today. Yeah, if I didn't have my teammates to get me open and give me screens, I wouldn't be able to do that kind of stuff. So I throw it out to my teammates and help me out and get me all those points. You do it again tonight, one of those NBA range threes. I mean, you don't even think twice about those, do you? No, but I miss this one, so it's not as good. But, oh, that one went in. Yeah, you, you had the long one uh, where you were on the X of the Big 12 sign on the floor. I didn't really remember that one, so I'll just, I'll take it. <laughs> where does your range stop, or does it? Probably after half court, but I'm not for sure. <laughs> Connor, I guess lastly, what, what does this mean to go back to back for you guys? Well, it's awesome to be a sophomore and win two already, and hopefully we can get two more so I can go four straight, and that'd be the best. Yeah, that'd that, be awesome. That would be certainly awesome and something special. Yep. Connor, congratulations, and congratulations to all the Ravenna Blue Jays. They are the champions in Class C2 for the second straight year. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Join the Sports Partners Club because sports partners like you make NET Sports Action possible. Blazing fastballs, spectacular strikeouts, fan pandemonium, and an eye-catching name. Take an intimate glimpse at Nebraska native and now New York Yankees pitcher Jabba Chamberlain, the people, places, and events which have influenced his road to success in Yesterday's The Jabba Chamberlain Story. Sunday night at 6.30 Central on NET One and NET HD. Ravenna the winner 57 to 51 as we welcome you back to the backstage area for one final time on this championship Saturday and a, another memorable once again uh, Kevin as Ravenna pulls off the repeat we saw a three-peat today uh, by the uh, young man in Class C1 from Hastings St. Cecilia exciting games all the way around an overtime game in Class B it was another memorable championship Saturday yeah a very eventful day here yeah. at the Devaney Center considering we had that first time champion in South Sioux City and then the Class A game pretty much lived up to the hype. I know it wasn't nip and tuck down the stretch like some of the other contests, but just the atmosphere with Norfolk here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. That was just so much energy in the building, a very fun game, and Omaha Central back on top in Class A. Absolutely, and don't forget Freeman, a first-time champion, and we saw uh, Ewing get back into the winner's circle today as they uh, kind of avenged last year's very heartbreaking loss in Class D, too. So uh, really a, a fine day and so many good individual performances. You know, coming into this championship, Saturday there were so many good individuals who we were going to see today and just about every one of them lived up to their hype coming into the game. Yeah, I think when I'm going to reflect on this championship Saturday, a few months down the road, maybe next year, that's the one thing I will likely remember about this day in particular, the star power. Those stars lived up to the billing, and more importantly, those stars led their teams to championships. You can go straight down the list. Right. Kyle Schlake, Dalton Seeley, uh, Mike Gazelle, Deverell Biggs, Connor Baronic, all the way one through six. If you had to pick one star player in each of the six championships, that team basically won. Yeah, and uh, Kotzer uh, joining Austin the all-time, yes. Austin Kotzer joining the all-time uh, tournament career scoring list at number 12 all-time. So congratulations to him on another fine career. And we saw a lot of young players probably establish themselves as stars to watch in the future. And there's one person I can think of in particular, Akoy Agal of Omaha Central, a near triple-double today in the Class A final. Yeah, a very unlikely hero. He had the game winner to get Central into the championship game yesterday, and then he follows that up with just a breakout performance. So as we look forward to next year, you have to expect some pretty big things out of Omaha Central. And I have to figure that there might be some repeat champions next year. Very possible. It's been a lot of fun.
Look forward to next year, but it's a long ways away. Yeah, that's the 101st <laughs> edition of the high that's school right. boys state championship. So the 100th was certainly a very fun one. And John, again, it's always Thanks a, a pleasure to work alongside you. This is your 15th consecutive year, so it keeps getting better and better. It certainly does. Thanks a lot to everyone at NET and 1011. Yeah, we have a lot of thank yous to dish out here in the late night edition of our high school boys state championships. We want to thank the production and engineering crews. It's a co-production between 1011 and NET Sports. True teamwork showed on those guys parts. Dr. Jim Tenniper and the Nebraska School Activities Association, Butch Hug and the staff at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, Nebraska Educational Television, Husker Vision. Stay tuned for 1011 News for John Bishop, Dan Hedman, the entire 1011 and NET Sports Crews. I'm Kevin Suits signing off. Good night. What a great week of basketball. Coverage of the 2010 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships has been brought to you in part by Concordia University, One Oak Energy Marketing, Nebraska Community Colleges, and by Southeast Community College.